Kyle Sondland and Herbert Konings are founding partners of Security Token Group. All opinions expressed by them or guests on this podcast are solely their opinions and do not represent the views of Security Token Group or its subsidiaries. You should not take any opinion expressed on the show as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow any investment strategy. This podcast is for informational purposes only. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Security Token Show. We are on episode 163. Oh, my gosh. This is like three-plus years now. We're here in sunny Miami, Florida. Of course, I'm your host, Kyle Sondlin, joined with me by my co-host, Herbert Konings. And fortunately, we have another week with both of us here in the office, both of us here on set, talking about security tokens. We have... Obviously, a whole host of news, but I want to shout out our sponsor this week, Invest Ready. Thank you to Adrian Alvarez and the team over at Invest Ready for doing such amazing work in accrediting, accrediting investors. They've made acquisitions recently, and they, they really are your one-stop shop for dealing with compliance with regards to onboarding investors. They work with a lot of the people in the security token space, and we work certainly very closely with them. So shout out to Invest Ready. We absolutely, absolutely do. Fun fact, it was actually the first tech company I ever started. Started with Adrian. Uh, it's actually where I got a lot of my knowledge. So happy to see them sponsoring the show here today. With that, Kyle, we've got an amazing show. Top five latest things you need to know, the latest industry news, the newest security token offerings, what's happening in the secondary market, a look inside the metaverse, and today's main topic, the importance of education specifically for real estate tokenization. Shall we get into it, Kyle? Let's dive right in. For the top five things you need to know happening right now in the security token industry, we're kicking off with number one, the Thesis Hotel. Now, we've talked about this on the past in the show, not only because it's right here in our backyards. Kyle and I have visited the property. It's not more than 20 minutes away. We're talking about a massive 200 plus unit hotel with another 200 residences, as well as retail space, as well as uh, three restaurants involved. An absolutely incredible building down here in Miami worth uh, well over $100 million. I believe it is something like an $85 million offering. And they have officially announced that they are listing uh, they're listing on Templum, folks. So that's another platform that helps trade uh, security tokens if you haven't heard about it. And the big, big news is that the Thesis Hotel, out of all of their options, they've chosen Templum for their listing. Hopefully, we'll see that happen soon enough. And with number two, we have another new listing, this side on the primary markets. This is INX bringing the ADVENT token to market. The ADVENT token is all about the company that's creating movies, television, video games, metaverse experiences, all kinds of creative IP. They're bringing it to market. You can get access to it. Doesn't matter whether you're accredited, whether you're a retail investor, US, international, everybody's able to participate. And this should be an exciting one, a new listing coming to market on the primary brokerage side for INX. That is exciting stuff. Uh, moving on to number three, we see the SEC just received a critica critical letter uh, criticizing their approach to uh, how they're approaching digital asset securities regulation, specifically uh, Representative uh, Hickenlooper, if I'm saying that John right. John Hickenlooper. John Hickenlooper is calling out the SEC. Now, this is not the first time that Gary Gensler specifically in his agenda, which he rebuts as all tokens seem to be securities. The law is clear. We're looking for a little bit more uh, guidance. So we completely agree here with Hagen Looper. The fascinating thing is that this seems to be a bipartisan attack consistently on the SEC, Despite the fact that Gensler was appointed by Joe Biden, a Democrat, this case, Hickenlooper is also a Democrat from Colorado. And number four, FTX is under investigation by a local regulator in Texas, I believe it is. And they are specifically looking at a lot of the rehypothecation business models that BlockFi, Coinbase, and others have already received sanctions for. They believe that FTX is doing the same, but bigger than that, the interesting thing here is that they're actually calling the Voyager acquisition into question, suggesting that FTX should not be allowed to acquire a different lender if FTX's own business practices are not 
qualified. So they want to prevent that acquisition from happening until FTX settles their problems with regulators. This is why you never want probes looking around at what you're doing, because that's a big M&A deal that just got halted. And that's not just the SEC, like you said, that's a Texas state securities regulators, yes. as well as every other state out there has got one. So better watch out. And last but not least, down to number five here, big news from Digital Prime Technologies. They've officially gotten the approval for one of their subsidiaries, DLCC Prime, for prime brokerage of digital asset security. So Woo! ring, 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 a new player on the block helping out with a much needed angle of helping these security tokens find their initial primary offering investors before they can actually get listed in the first place. So excited to see what they bring to the industry. A new challenger approaches. <laughs> and with that, let's get into the rest of the industry news with Anna Yanzi. Happy Grand Rising, everyone. I hope you had a great weekend and are ready for some tokenization industry news. Today, we are starting off in Germany. Douche Force Digital Post Trade Platform D7 has executed the first digital securities issuance in the country. The platform aims to provide a fully digital alternative to conventional issuance for around 80% of German securities, including warrants and certificates with further asset classes and jurisdictions planned in the future. ClearStream created the digital instrument on D7, which works as a connector between established networks and digital capabilities. Historically, German securities had to be issued as paper-based global notes up, up, to, up until last year when regulators passed the Electronic Securities Act to allow dematerialized issuance. Since December 2021, the company has been processing dematerialized securities via central, a central register, the first live D7 component. Next up in Switzerland, we have Berner Cantonal Bank, or BEKB, onboarding to Switzerland's Six Digital Exchange, or SDX, the world's first fully regulated FMI digital asset exchange. As a first transaction, we'll issue DARA participation certificates. The collaboration between XDS, BEKB, and DARA will enable SMEs to issue their shares digitally in the form of uncertified securities or DLT securities. DARA will be the first user of this model by issuing participation certificates, which will be made available in the banking system through BEKB. These shares will then be registered on the XDX CSD network. David News, head of XDS, said both companies are pioneers in the digital asset space, and now with XDS together, they are building an ecosystem for small and medium enterprises. For our last news of the days, we have the Securities Commission of the Bahamas. They are partnering with the government of the Bahamas to host a global fintech and Web3 festival from January 24th through the 26th of 2023 at the Atlantis Hotel. The in-person festival, branded as D3 Bahamas, aims to host over 3,000 industry leaders from across the Americas, Middle East, Europe, and Asia. It is a week long and will have the regulatory showcase, venture capital forum, D3 startup battle, Bahama spotlight, and dozens of networking and side events. The Minister of Economic Affairs, Han Michael Halkaitis, said... The government is aiming to substantially grow the digital asset sectors in the Bahama and through this festival will bring fintech thought leaders, entrepreneurs, enthusiast people with a deep interest in the space to, the shirts, to their shorts. For more information on how to be a part of it, visit d3bahamas.com. All right, folks, that's all the news I have for you today. Catch you next week. Hi, tokenizers. Welcome back to STO Updates. First up, we have INX1 set to facilitate Hollywood's first entertainment security token offering called Advent Token. Advent Token began its primary capital raise on the INX1 platform, offering investors the chance to own a piece of Hollywood. INX Digital Company is the broker dealer who announced last week that with this INX1 platform, they will be enabling the primary capital raise of Advent Token. This is the first digital, digital security that opens the door to profit participation in Hollywood movies, television shows, and video games created by Advent Entertainment, the a leading film and entertainment funding company. The offering is now open to the first 2,000 potential U.S. accredited investors and all non-U.S. accredited investors today. Advent Token was created by the Advent Entertainment team which includes two Academy Award winners, Philip Goldfein and Keith Merrill. 
and is also led by Lee Baker and Jerome Sidewell, who have worked on projects such as Avatar, Avengers, Spider-Man, Race to Witch Mountain, among others. The Advent team has created a slate of film and television projects, and they plan to use Advent Token alongside other digital assets to enhance fan participation as well as enable them to potentially profit from the projects from start to finish. To learn more about this project, head over to inx1.co, adventtoken.com, or Yahoo Finance, where this story initially appeared. Next up, we have news from Benzinga. They have an announcement from the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange that they are going to an issue digital state bond. Additionally, the Office of the Accountant General of the Israeli Ministry of Finance are working together to test a blockchain-based platform for trading these digital bonds. The initiative will be backed by Israeli blockchain infrastructure firm Fireblocks and multi-cloud service provider VMware. The new initiative called Eden intends to reduce costs and simplify the national bond issuance procedure. The experiment will look at how blockchain technology may reduce risks while enhancing transparency and speeding up the issue and clearing of state bonds. It is not known specifically which digital currencies will be used in the live test. The pilot project is projected to be completed by the end of the first quarter of 2023. Additionally, they were reviewing the numerous CBDC issuance experiments conducted by financial institutions and central banks throughout the globe. That is all for this week, guys. I will see you next Monday with more updates in the space. Hello and happy Monday. The security token market cap is up a hair this week to $15.375 billion as the market still adjusts to the Dignity Gold News. A Negra group holds the top spot in total market cap value as they now boast over 95% of the market share. T0's token was up over 5% last week on increased trading volume. We'll be closely monitoring this to see if this activity keeps up and maybe we begin an upcycle. BNY Mellon has announced that its digital asset custody platform is live in the U.S. with select clients that are now able to hold and transfer Bitcoin and Ethereum. This milestone reinforces BNY Mellon's commitment to supporting client demand for a trusted provider of both traditional and digital asset servicing. As America's oldest bank, BNY Mellon has a 238-year legacy of trust, resilience, and innovation. In this spirit, BNY Mellon formed an enterprise digital assets unit in 2021 to develop solutions for digital asset technology with plans to launch the industry's first multi-asset platform that bridges digital and traditional asset custody. In other news, DLCC Prime, a wholly owned subsidiary of Digital Prime Technologies, announced that it has been granted FINRA, which is the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, membership. And with it, the ability to operate as a broker-dealer registered with the U.S. SEC. FINRA membership allows DLCC Prime to operate as a regulated broker-dealer in the rapidly changing digital security sector. Digital Prime Technologies is focused on its commitment to best practices and software, allowing its clients the ability to offer prime brokerage solutions in the evolving digital security sector. This is big news, and we have a new competitor in this space which is super duper exciting. And it's going to be very interesting to see how this develops over time. That's all for now, but I hope you have an amazing rest of your week and I'll see you next week. Thank you, Wakey. Welcome to Inside the Metaverse with your host, Eve Van Gogh. In-N-Out Burger has planned a new trademark application claiming plans for NFT back media, virtual food and drinks, retail stores for virtual goods, and according to the trademark application, In-N-Out plans to provide temporary use of online, non-downloadable software for users to access, transmit, exchange, and establish virtual ownership of virtual goods, blockchain tokens, and non-fungible digital media. Next, FIFA launches inside the Roblox metaverse ahead of the World Cup in Qatar for 2022. FIFA's chief business officers, Romy Guy, said as part of their commitment to grow football and develop ways for new fans to engage with the sport, FIFA's immersive experiences on Roblox will provide football fans with a hugely exciting new way to interact with friends, celebrate rich culture and heritage around the world's sports competition, and demonstrate their creativity, national pride through various features. Moving forward. 
Kraft has applied to trademark the iconic Wienermobile. The trademark application suggests that Kraft Foods Group also plans to operate a virtual restaurant, as well as feature virtual goods for home delivery, both in the real world and the virtual world. And last but not least, we have Interpol, which starting its own metaverse for police. Interpol has launched what it calls the first global police metaverse, specifically designed for law enforcement worldwide. Its purpose will range from offering immersive training courses to law enforcement across the globe to touring the Interpol General Headquarters in Lyon, France, to interacting with other officers via their avatars. That was Inside the Metaverse with your host, Eve Van Gogh. And with that, we're going into our companies of the week. This segment is where Herwig and I picked two companies that caught our eye. We wanted to give an extra special shout out for doing something incredible in the industry. Herwig, I'm just going to jump right into it Do this it. week. For my company of the week, it is Templum. Templum with their highest profile listing to date. Templum obviously has been a broker for quite a long time. You may be familiar if you've been in the market for a long time. Founded quite a few moons ago by Vince Molinari and team. Now he is no longer with the firm, but the business keeps chugging along. Now announcing that NRI, Nolan Reynolds International's newest listing, the Thesis Hotel here in Miami, or at least in Coral Gables, is going to be tokenized through a crowdfunding campaign they did for accredited investors through an online real estate portal. And those shares will be trading on Templum. They're using a specific transfer agent I hadn't heard of before, which was the Ledger Lab LLC. That is the transfer agent for the deal. Then Templum will be handling the actual marketplace and exchange there. And these are digital securities people, don't get it twisted. It is using blockchain technology. They specifically noted Avalanche and Ethereum as two of the layer ones that they're looking to work with and support. Avalanche being the first choice according to their newest press release. And again, shout out to Templum for bringing an asset to market, for persevering over years and years and winning a very high profile client here in South Florida. I think that's a great choice, Kyle. As you mentioned, Templum was there around from the very beginning, but there wasn't much activity over the last Mm. few years, I'd say. So now to see this major, major win uh, with a company like NRI, which is a multi-billion dollar real estate manager, by the way. So this may be the first of many listings on Templum uh, by the NRI portfolio. So very exciting stuff. Congratulations, team over at Templum. How about you? Well, I got to give it to Societe Generale, or SocGen for short, one of the largest banks in the world, top 50 banks, folks, tons and tons of money on assets under management. Uh, And believe it or not, they have been quite active in the security token space if you haven't been following the show over the last few years. They've actually launched their Forge uh, Center, which actually is focused on tokenization and crypto. Uh, They've pioneered doing one of the very first Ethereum-based bonds uh, issued by the bank in uh, actually collaboration with the European Central Bank, or it was the Central Bank of France, I'm not sure. Mm. Uh, Either way, very pioneering stuff. And now they've officially announced digital asset custody support. So they are moving full steam into crypto, a major, major bank. We've seen this trend already, uh, but more so... I love their emphasis and focus on digital asset securities, Kyle. They know that security tokens are the future. They very much recognize that custody is a critical component of the future of security tokens, and they plan to be right there at the front and center of it. And based on their pioneering work, Kyle, I got to say, I think they're going to be there. So with that, Societe Generale, you're my company of the week. Makes total sense. They are an innovator in this industry, and maybe they should talk to security token advisors about figuring out how to work with the U.S. markets, but that's neither here nor there. We'd be happy to help, Kyle. But with that, why don't we dive into our main topic for the episode? Ooh, Kyle, episode 163 is almost at a wrap, sir. We've got our main topic for the episode. Kind of excited about this one, real estate tokenization education specifically. Hmm. We're going to break down what is real estate and, and how it's getting tokenized specifically in some use cases, its benefits, and our most recent uh, product offering, Kyle, from Security Token Advisors, where we've actually got a virtual course that can teach you the end-to-end uh, that we're going to get into it. So with that, Kyle, hmm. maybe let's just dive right into it. What's some of your favorite parts about real estate tokenization? Yeah, that's a great question. So when you look at the realities of this asset class with real estate, right now, really the only way 
to get exposure to real estate is by buying a house or by buying an investment property. Maybe you could go in as a syndicate if you're buying a commercial property, or perhaps you can buy a REIT on the public markets. But unless you're buy- you want to buy Simon Property Group and buy malls, there's not a ton of options for you in terms of REITs on the public market. So, so really, when we see the benefits of tokenization, it starts with the biggest thing, which is this shared ownership structure, this fractionalization component, but not just with regards to a local investor base. Having the fact that anyone around the world is able to access and participate in this deal because of the values that tokenization provides in creating an immutable ledger of the compliance of who is investing, where they're investing from, and whether they're allowed to do those things. So I think a lot of people, when they think of the immutability, that it means it's permanent from a transaction, from a trade perspective. If you get hacked, it gets stolen. Right. Not what we're saying, right? The asset layer isn't permanent, but What is permanent is who bought it, when they bought it, and what they did with it. So being able to manage that, the accounting almost, if you will, of this asset and of these specific assets that are super high value, but traditionally have never seen a lot of liquidity makes a lot of sense to me. And I obviously think is is one of the highest benefits that tokenization brings to real estate. I think you nailed it. I mean, the reality is, is we're talking about a $300 trillion market, folks. The real estate asset class is enormous, not the biggest asset class in the entire world. And to your point, at best, you can either go get a mortgage and maybe try to acquire property for yourself or you can go buy some stocks online. So real estate tokenization, and I love that word fractionalization, as you said, that is the key word here. It is very difficult to get access to real estate in a liquid matter or in a small fraction, unless it really is through the public markets where you have some of these REIT options available where they have a lower share price. But again, you're limited to what's available on the public markets. Just for some perspective, about $3 trillion worth of REITs are available on public markets. That's a, a, about a 1% number of, of what the total opportunity is out there. Uh, so really when it comes to real estate tokenization, I think to, to summarize what you just said is this, it's archaic folks. Mm. Real estate itself, if you think about it, it doesn't trade. You know, the building you're in right now or the home that you're in right now, it doesn't trade like a stock or a company like we know it. Uh, And so therefore, there are all these other more difficult ways to get involved in the asset class up until now. Real tokenization, thanks to tokenization, means that we can fractionalize the asset but still keep it private, therefore enabling everyone to be able to say participate in, you know, your average home right in your neighborhood or a bakery that's down the street or even the mall that may not be owned by a Mm. large public uh, corporation. I think there's another point that you always like to make, and I want to give you the floor. Talk about a little bit more about how blockchain, especially for real estate portfolios, can provide significant levels of transparency into the underlying portfolio. Absolutely huge, folks. Uh, When you go and invest in, say, a real estate fund, whether it's privately or publicly, you're not going to get all that much information. It's pretty much what they're required to disclose, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, So when it comes to information regarding the portfolio, there isn't really all that much data. This is quite the opposite trend when it comes to real estate tokenization, because in order to create interest and demand for your asset, you need to put out information. Uh, And you can either put this on the blockchain or point to the blockchain so that it makes it much easier for either programmers or for individuals to go ahead and read the data or visualize the data for somebody to read it uh, and make it very easy for you to search information and get information right there on chain. And furthermore, because it's all on chain, That means the actual related governance activities, AKA, uh, for example, sending a distribution is also on chain. So thanks to this fractionalization, we all own a token. I've got a distribution of $1,000 to make. Well, you own two tokens, so you get $2. Someone else owns another 900, they get $900 and I own the remaining 98. And so I get $98 and that's all automatic via smart contracts. That's then reported on chain. So that's now in the history books of that distribution being made. It's an incredibly new way of doing real estate that quite frankly, the current real estate market, it has no idea how amazing and how different their world is going to become. Absolutely right. I think that These benefits are drastic in terms of increasing the opportunity of bringing in new investors, as well as potentially reducing the cost of capital because of the fact that some of these processes can be automated and managed in a way that doesn't require throwing manpower at these things. But transitioning to the next part of this main topic, there is this 
gap or this barrier that we need to jump over with regards to getting traditional real estate investors more comfortable in using technology. How do you see that challenge playing out and how has that changed over time? Yeah, I think that's a a great question because ultimately we haven't seen a massive shift in technological adoption in the real estate industry. PropTech is only just becoming a a thing, I would say. Uh, And so it's definitely not expected that, you know, real estate developers, asset managers, fund managers, et cetera, would go ahead and suddenly just jump on tokenization. Uh, The reason that they will is because of the sheer opportunity and efficiencies Uh, administration efficiencies means less people that you have to hire, automation, faster times, all equal benefits, on top of the transparency for LPs and the potential liquidity of new assets that in there could be actually what we call the liquidity premium, something we've talked Mm. quite a bit out on the show, but the idea being that it's very difficult to sell a building uh, because there's only a few buyers that would be able to purchase that whole building and might be interested. But if you were to say fractionalize it and create a lot more interest and a lot more potential buyers, you might actually get a better price for it as opposed to a lower price for what it is, uh, which actually gives you that liquidity premium. Right. So there's all these opportunities in taking advantage of tokenization. But as you just said, there is a massive gap. What is that gap? Education, it's as simple as that. Uh, There is no technology software provider where one can just sign up and within 30 minutes, their real estate is tokenized and now they can go find uh, an ATS to go list it on and everybody's happy-go-lucky. One day, maybe. Maybe, maybe, but that's the, the a tough reality when it comes to securities, right? We're not talking about crypto assets. So ultimately, real estate you know, needs to go through this journey of becoming a best practice to tokenize. And in order for that to happen, there needs to be not only the use cases, but people, even more people doing it themselves, like we saw with the thesis, as we mentioned earlier. We've many times talked about realty on the show or the Aspen in St. Regis or the St. Regis in Aspen that's also tokenized, right? All great use cases of tokenization, but they were all pioneers. They understood Web3, investment banking and, and capital markets, real estate assets, compliance, crowdfunding, you know, everything else in between that it takes to do tokenization. And so Kyle, that's why we came up with potentially what we think is a solution. Retech. Retech, real estate technology. This is a class uh, that we've come up with. It's an online course. It's four modules. Uh, Takes you through the introduction to blockchain. As most uh, people don't understand the internet, we want to try to give a basic primer of why uh, is blockchain fundamental. I I think without that psychological understanding, it's hard to want to get excited about adopting the technology. So first, we start out with that very basic introduction. Module two. Uh, We're talking about traditional versus tokenized real estate, all of those benefits in great detail uh, of how that actually works. uh, So you can really understand more than a 30 minute conversation or a 10 minute conversation Mm -hmm. here on the topic. Uh, Module number three, we're talking about liquidity. So how do you actually create liquidity and take advantage of the blockchain in this way? And what does that actually mean? Because like I just said earlier, it's not a magic flip of a switch. And last but not least, we want to talk about case studies and applications so that you can take this knowledge and go out and start tokenizing real estate. And we'll be having Q&As. We'll be having lots of questions and quizzes online in our our courses and our modules. And there's roughly uh, maybe 40 to 50 hours of content up there for you to digest and get through. So hopefully you walk away uh, with everything you needed to know about real estate tokenization, Kyle. Yeah, so I just wanna shout out that when you say we, it's actually you referring to Security Token Advisors, the leading consulting firm in the industry. They help issuers come through and figure out, all right, I've got a real estate property. I'm a family office here in Miami, Florida. I've got this portfolio of assets. I wanna figure out how to leverage tokenization, but I just don't know where to start. I don't know how to make this process go smoothly. I don't know where to find a lawyer, a broker, a marketing partner, all these different services that go along with it. So they end up hiring STA to help through that process. And in that journey, the whole STA team has put together quite an incredible course of resources here. We've got a lot of experience on this team, uh, helping a lot of different issuers, specifically, especially in the real estate sector, tokenizing across all types. So again, we've really seen it all and we've accumulated this knowledge. Not everybody's ready to pay for a team to get custom handholding and education about how they can move forward with their business. So we've tried to do our best to make something that's easy to digest 
podcast and available online at stacourse.com so you can go ahead and self-teach yourself, self-educate yourself on real estate. Get learned. So with that, Kyle, I think we can wrap up our show. As always, it's a pleasure. Thank you for watching. We hope to catch you next week. We have the best place to check out online at stm.co, the latest security token data, the latest news. It's a one-stop shop. You can participate in our community on our Discord. Make sure you sign up for our What's Dripping newsletter. And of course, Kyle and I are available on social media whenever. If you've got questions, feedback, or suggestions, we always love tweetering away. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, do what you gotta do, share the magic, and we'll talk to you next week. Happy tokenizing.